Hello, everybody. It is 2 o'clock, and it's time to start up again. This is Unhindered by Coding. I'm Nick McPhee, where we are continuing our refactoring and eventual extension of the simple evolutionary computation system that we've been building out over the past few months. Um, uh, there had been, at one point, I was going to be working on uh, a the segmented file system project again in this slot, but we made a lot of good progress on the Rust GA thing this morning. And I feel like that's really where my enthusiasm is at the moment. So I say we're just gonna roll with it. In fact, I think that given the um, that I'm still stuck and, and just haven't like found the energy to care about like resolving the, um, ice repos issues um, for the moment. And there we basically got two weeks before I'm going to disappear again for Christmas. Um, uh, I think I'm just going to focus on the evolution computation thing for the next uh, two weeks. And I think that we're making progress. There's a lot of good work to do. I'm learning things about Rust. Um, and I'm having good experiences. So I'm just going to do that. I hope that works for you. If that is, you know, a bad deal in your universe, let me know. Um, there are certainly other options in the world. Um, feel free to either chat here or use the Discord link uh, to join Discord. And we can talk there about what the plan might be. But I think this is how I'm going to sort of persist at the moment. Um, so... Uh, where we left off then is we had managed to um, do a lot of refactoring. Um, we had encapsulated, see, this is going to be more useful. Um, we'd renamed our individual struct to be EC individual because the intent is there'll be a, um, uh, a trait like this, which actually will be over in the mod rs file um, and that this will be a struct that implements that trait when we get to that point um, and then the goal will be to try to in an incremental fashion and this is I think going to be the key piece for me is figuring out how to incrementally switch from using the struct to the trait that sort of the refactoring pattern there is not not something I hello is it Sue I got basically zero experience doing this kind of refactoring in rust moving from structs to traits and so figuring out how to do that in a more incremental way where I can use tests and other things to kind of check that yes okay where we are works life is good and then um, sort of make our way through the system that way um, and, uh, you know, thinking about it, I wonder if, I wonder if this is the wrong direction to go. Because there's a question of, is it going to work better going from the bottom up? Do you take the kind of innermost type, the type that is that more things depend on, which in this case would be individual, and you make it a trait, and then try to sort of work your way up through the dependencies, replacing um, references to concrete types with the trait sort of one level at a time, or do you start at the top, which is probably generation for us at the moment. Um, there probably is actually another type above generation, but we haven't made that. It's just like a bunch of free-floating functions um, above that at the moment. Um, but start at generation and make it a trait. No, I think I think starting at the bottom and then hoping we can change references to concrete types to references to um, the new trait in an incremental fashion would be nice. Let's hope that works. We're going to give it a shot. It's a learning exercise. Um, 
So, and we renamed individual to EC individual, so I'll have two different names. Now, that's in some ways less critical um, if they were going to be in the same module, then it's a necessity. Um, if, in fact, this moves... Up to module. Now, th this would be, they could both be called individual. Um, however, I have a small brain and I find if there's lots of the same name but meaning different things in the debugging messages, I get easily befuddled. So for the moment, I'm going to go with EC individual here and individual there. It wouldn't be that hard to do a renaming. Like if we got all this to work and everything was happy, then it wouldn't be a big deal to rename this back to individual. Um, and in theory, everything would just do the right thing. And that would be a possibility. Um, but for now, I'm going to leave them as having two separate names. Um, and then the other thing I was going to comment on is um, I'm pretty sure. So I like having individual be a folder with a mod and a particular implementation. That seems cool. And I think the one place where that really would be useful, and I'm not going to do it here today, but I might do it offline, is I think that would really make a lot of sense with selectors that the mod would have the definition of the trait. And then I could have subfiles for all of these little guys. So there could be a random under selectors and a best under selectors and a tournament. And that would be nice because it would bring the, the pieces that are related to tournament, which is the struct, this impl and that impl would all be together in a file. And Lexicase also has several pieces that would be together in a file. Um, and the tests that are specific to a particular selector could be in that selector's module. And that as a sub-module there. And that, I think, actually makes a lot of sense. So I think I'm not going to take up our time with that today, but that's definitely something that I think I want to do um, is tidy up the selector thing, because I think that would really make a lot of sense. Okay. So, in the absence of any questions, I think we're on to trying to implement a trait for individual. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, we're going to need an individual uh, to have... Um, Hmm. Uh, one thing I hadn't thought about is that the individual trait is going to need to have these get methods, at least where we use them everywhere. Um, we could potentially actually separate them out. You could imagine you know, one trait that says this thing has a genome and another trait that says this thing has test results. Um, and uh, yeah, we'd have to see. Hmm. So let's see, you think your population struct needs to be updated to population of T or T is an individual to see what we need there. So right now population <clears throat> um, is VecPop is specifically an EC individual. And so you're suggesting if we turn this into uh, a individual type, um, then it would sort of tell us what we need, at least in population. Okay, that makes sense. And it would, that gives us a way for the system to tell us how we're using individuals, at least within the population. And since a population is a wrapper around a collection of individuals, that seems to make sense. Um, 
So we would. Now the trick is, how do we do this? Where, so we could do two things. We could. I mean, I guess this is the thing to do, right? Is to, um, if we want to see kind of how things break, um, turn this. Uh, individual individuals vec i and save that and see how many bad things happen. Now the the thing that um, yeah that's a good point. It does make it easier to make po uh, the trait the population trait later. The the Oh, yeah. So the problem is none of this ends up... I like to make the refactoring be as incremental as possible. <clears throat> and this is going to basically break every use of VecPop had two things and now it has one thing. And I don't know... Hmm... I don't, mm. I don't know a way to, you, you kind of like your refactoring to be able to have the new universe and the older universe so things was both work and then you kind of incrementally move from the old to the new. Um, uh, And here, so clearly any reference to VecPop here is going to have to get turned into things. Um, and then bit string, what breaks? Probably in the test. Uh, let's see. Yeah, VecPop with two things. Generation, VecPop and VecPop, so those two things, um, and selectors, any reference to VecPop is going to have to change. Um, is there a way to do this where, let me move it back here, where we can somehow have both of them. Oh, could I wonder if could we do? Um, now, if I called that something else um vec pop i it's a terrible name just sort of looking for and if i said this was in fact no this was in fact a vec pop I around that type. Does that buy me anything? Well, everything compiles. We are using this type indirectly. Oh, everything doesn't compile. Oh, yeah, sure. Because all the constructors are going to break. Um... But this does actually tell us things about what the population needs to be able to do. So it does tell us things about the population as a trait, but it doesn't really tell us anything very useful as the individual as a trait. I don't know that that was a lot of help. Because uh, 
Yeah, all the just any reference to individuals is going to be broken, and so we don't really know what uh, what we need individual to be able to do. I guess we could implement a bunch of things on VecPop I that just call. No, actually, implement a bunch of things on VecPop that call into the individuals there, but that's I think not helpful. So I don't think that was very, um, uh, yeah. So, you know, move the genome and test methods over. We know we need those, but your question about what, but then what is clearly the, the right question. So, and unfortunately we can't like, if I change, okay, let's put this back. And I comment that out, and I make this this. <clears throat> um, well, maybe maybe I do a global search and replace for gr, vecpop gr, and change it to vecpop i, and that's fast. Um, oh, so actually a type alias, that's an interesting possibility. So if this goes back to that, type vec pop gr equals vec pop individual gr. So like that, ooh, it didn't like that. Oh, vec pop i. I made an infinite recursion, that was bad. Um, Oh, it's EC individual. Yep. Because I changed my own names. Um, now, what does that do for us? Um, now we could then incrementally try to change VecPop GRs into references to VecPop I. But is, this isn't going to teach us anything. Oh, wait, what? Well, I don't know. What is that? This isn't going to teach us anything. Oh. Oh, the type alias is private. Oops. Um, let's try. Yeah, everything compiles. So this doesn't teach us anything about what we need individuals to be able to do, which is, you know, I think kind of where we're trying to go with this. Um, I could, in theory, start to change VecPop things into VecPop I things. Um, and see where that takes us, but that doesn't really answer the question about what individuals are. We're kind of working with populations more than with individuals. So another possibility, I guess, would be, um, well, could be, um, I'm presumably gonna need to basically copy a whole bunch of stuff Right, so, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like I'm gonna end up copying. So, I mean, we need VecPop I to have a new method, which is mostly gonna be the same, I think. Um, so, and we need to keep the old one. So we essentially gonna copy paste 
all of this, change the um, name, and watch everything blow up. Oh, yeah, right. This is going to now be just an I. And I will presumably need to be send. Oh, well. So, what does that do? We don't have G anymore. I guess, why do I keep the old one? Oh, since this is just a, another name for this, we don't need them both. Ah, so that's advantage of the type alias. Um, is that I don't need them both. I think when I was thinking about um, having the this the two structs, then I was going to need this for all of them. But by just saying this is an alias for that, I don't need them both. Good catch. So we don't. Oh, that that makes me a lot happier. So this does feel more incremental now. Um, so, okay. Um, and so now we've got some typing issues. So we no longer have G and R. So make genome is going to have, so we really are going to have to have G and R here. Um, so that we bring, no, or not. No, we can't. So they're going to have to actually be on the new G, R, and H here. Okay. Um, no, you're saying just, we don't want them to happen. Oh yeah, we don't because we're saying we're going to have an I here. So really, this can't be this anymore. We can't have those two things. We're going to need to have a function that, um, yeah. Uh, oh, and so if they're the associated types, then we can actually say that here, right? So genome equals G no no we don't we don't access them here actually have I even done that do I have the um, no I want the mod individual okay uh, and are we bringing in oh we don't have individual so so where is this why is this not even oh this is going to have to implement individual ah okay that's important quick oh, come on quick fix import individual okay so now we know that i is of type individual and now we can refer to I, I, genome, no, um, why are you grumpy, associated type genome not found for I, uh, there is one for individual, oh, I don't say that this has to be of type individual, And now genome works, and then I colon our uh, test results. Oh, that's nifty. And then this is going to be I colon colon genome has to be borrow, and H doesn't have to be anything. Oh. So in Rust, you typically only put the bounds on the impulse. 
not on the structs. So, so I wouldn't put it here, is what you're saying. Okay. So I'm not sure I understand why that would be the case. I mean, I guess it's, well, and notice it just blew this world up. Um, I mean, I can see that it would be more general if I don't constrain it. But if you know that it really probably needs to be that kind of thing, why wouldn't you say that in the struct definition? Um, and so I just want to make sure that that was what blew that up. Yeah. So that's interesting. Um, so that, if I take that out, then all kinds of code doesn't compile anymore. Now, why is that? Uh, well, okay, so here, so this is overly specific. Um, yeah, so you need it on the impulse anyway. Yeah, I see that still feels like you had an opportunity to convey some information, but maybe you're overly constraining it when you do that. So I'll play along. We'll see if we can make this work in a happy way without doing that. Um, so I assume, so individuals is a vec of I, and we're instead getting a vec of these things. Um, so we're providing overly constrained types. So we get, yeah, so this is, oh, this forces us to make EC individuals. So I feel like we're going to have to, Well, we could, we could just put EC individual here and say this implementation is only for EC individuals because we would need a really quite different, um, yeah, I see your, I see the point about, um, you would need it on every impl, even if it doesn't matter. And that isn't, that doesn't seem smart. Yeah. Okay. I buy that. Um, So, yeah, yeah, you're right. If I just, if I change this to EC individual, I'm really just back at VecPop and I've accomplished mostly nothing. But I don't see how I'm going to be able to do this new, and maybe new's the only one. Well, I mean, let's let's think a little bit. So I think these probably aren't going to need to know anything about it being EC individuals. This would just be an iterator over I, and um. And if, if part of the point was we were trying to learn what we needed to know about individuals, maybe what this is saying is that we need a way of constructing and scoring, well, basically constructing individuals from randomness. And that here I've split that into two parts, making the genome and running the tests. 
But if, we, if we're trying to generalize G and R out of the process, then um, we, uh, maybe just need to change how we think about that. Um, so we make here, we make the genome and then we do the scoring. Um, and we could certainly change, can generate be a trait? Ooh, that's an interesting idea. Sure. And then this would be one kind of generation way of generating um, as opposed to a sort of historical generation, um, one generation after the other. So maybe that makes sense. Um, so we'd have some kind of generator as a trait and that's going to be able to hide um yeah 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 actually i like that idea so maybe in an interest in the interest of trying to be incremental as possible maybe i undo uh, no, that's not the one I want to undo. Um, I undo that. That takes me. Oh, yeah. We'd have to go back to GNR. And, oh, and then all this other stuff has changed. Okay, let's, re actually, maybe we should use the fact that we have GitHub, or Git, and uh, we'll keep that change, we'll keep that change, but we'll just blow away most of this. Um, oh, maybe? Um, is that, uh, here? No, actually, I'm not sure I know where the timeline is. Um, I've never used that. Um, that's publishing, visualize the commits. That just changes the branch. Open a remote window. Just under the tree, under outline. Just under the tree. Oh, here we go. Timeline. I get, yep, look at that. And then, so can I just roll? That's probably like refresh, pin, filter. So I can probably roll back and look at things at various points. Aha, look at that. Um, and I can presumably say I want to go back to this point. Uh, or not. I would have, oh, restore contents. Yeah. So we could, uh, figure out where we introduced, um, issues. So we had Vecpop. Uh, actually, I think, I think it'd be easier just to, at the moment, go over to. Um, yeah. Um, I think I just want to get rid of. So I want to keep all of that, but get rid of all of this. This is what I want to not have. Um, so stage and stage and stage and stage and, oh, you make me do all of this? That's too bad. 
Um, probably a way to have done that better. So I want all of that to be kept, and I want to discard all of this, I think. Chilling. And now if we come back here, everything compiles and life is good. Okay. Um, that is just noise at the moment. So let's get rid of you. So let's go to individual and see if we can make a trait out of uh, generation. So we want some kind of trait that makes individuals. Uh, and if so pub trait generator probably should be in its own piece actually um actually should that be in here well let's put it here for now we move it around later pub trait generator and it's going to have a function that takes a random thing um, a mute thread orange uh, generate and returns an individual And that's going to want to be an associated type. And so we're just saying, oh, you think it should be in the mod? I was wondering about that. Yeah, I'll, we'll go with that. Um, rah, 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 rah. Oops, too many. Oh, yes, self. Uh, self? But don't we need... Oh, and then an individual implements generate. And, oh. So a thing that implements generate will return a type of its, an instance of its type. Um, and so we'd have um, right. Hmm. Okay, I think that makes sense. So then we should be able to implement generate on EC individual. Um, just take the existing generate method and make it a trait. So you're saying, take this, that this is basically impl um, this for generate individual gr. Whoa, nope, I did not do a thing. Um, Oh, I did that. I did these in the wrong order. That should be up here. So 
So we're saying the EC individual should implement, implement generation. Oh, and it doesn't generate doesn't take a, um, a type. So we don't have this here. Except we need to say that what the two associated. Oh, no, we don't. Make the new, move the new out to another impl. Um, oh, this, yeah, I get you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see it. Um, which really didn't need to be there. Well, I guess it did. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Impl G R E C individual G R bum, 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 bop, beep. Yeah. So that's happy. Now this is not happy. Well, we don't need pub anymore because it's now implementing something on a trait. Is that all that we need? So why are you grumpy? Oh, well, because we don't know what generate is. Uh, so we have to import generate from one up. Interesting, it doesn't give me a quick fix. That's mildly weird. Oh, it's generator. Uh, I can't. If I use the right name, it probably would give me a quick fix. And I can say use super. And now did it pull it in? No, it does not pull it in. Quick fix. Pull it in. Uh, import generator. Super generator. There we go. Okay. Um, so your, th your vote is to call it generate, um, implement generator for EC individual. So I guess this is a question. I don't know what sort of best practice is. I think this, I'm thinking in OO land, you typically wanted objects, classes, to be named after nouns and verbs to be methods. So you would have generate as the verb and generator as the noun. Um, uh, but here we're doing an interface... Yeah, so display and debug are verbs. Iterate is a verb. So traits and Rust seem often to be verbs. Good point. So maybe that does seem to be the thing that people do. So let's do that. I will roll with that for now. Generate. Boom. And now we come over to here. And that takes that, and we've got some things to clean up. So make genome is oh, interesting. A whole bunch of things are generate has three type parameters, but its declaration is zero. Oh. Oh, because this is now in the, oh, that's a little weird um, because in the, there isn't a parameter there and we need one here, but maybe we don't anymore. So H is there because 
um, I wanted to be able to pass. Yeah, so H is very specific to this being vectors of Booleans. So um, make genome was going to return a vector of Booleans. Run tests. I wanted to be able to take a slice. Uh, and uh, that the typing didn't work out. And actually, I posted a question on the Rust forum and got a nice answer back from this person um, that basically I needed to say that G borrowed H. So a vector can borrow a slice um, or it, no, a slice is a borrow. I'm not sure quite how to say that. Um, uh, oh, actually, this would probably tell us a trait for borrowing data. So we're saying that I think that um, G is the vector, H is a slice, so H is a borrow into G, and that H didn't need to be sized, and that was critical to getting the um, compilation to work because you got a bunch of compilation errors because um, uh, the slice didn't satisfy the sized um, trait uh, because we don't know how many items are in the array. And so this allows to say that H is the slice and we don't know its size. So all of this was necessary to make that interaction between vectors and arrays work for me. Um, and so all this is tied pretty tightly to that notion of what an individual is and in particular what a genome is, that this is buried in all of this is the idea that the genome really needs to be a vector and we want to be able to pass references into it into as arguments to this run test thing. Um, uh, and so you're suggesting copy the signature of this method to the trait. Okay. So basically copy all of that to here. And then have the problems of G and R here are going to be where are they going to come from? Because um, he, out here they're coming from this, but they don't make any sense. Oops, I wanted to be here. They don't make any sense if we're trying to have a generic notion of generation I mean this gets to be super specific um, and so you're saying this so generate only works on individuals And individual has these two things. So this is uh, individual genome and individual test results. Um, and make, oh self gene oh yeah 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 i get it sure because it is that thing we don't say individual there we would say self ah okay okay that makes sense so we're saying that generate only acts on individuals and that gives us access to the types genome and test results and so we can spec generate 
as taking uh, these arguments. And I feel like we probably need the where clause. Um, yeah. Um, I, mm, yeah, I, I bet. I bet we need this. So that there's a relationship between G and H here. Um, is that allowed? No. Oh, self genome. And H stays the same, but we have to import something to get borrow. Hey, that all like looks like that worked. Uh huh. Okay. Now over here, this now doesn't work. Why are you unhappy? Uh, the trait bound EC individual individual is not satisfied for the trait individual and is not implemented. So EC individual doesn't currently impl the trait individual. So this yells at me. So I need to at least say that EC individual impls individual. Uh, that'll be empty for now, but we'll have to do more with it. And that's going to need a G and an R or EC individual doesn't make sense. And you got to import that. And we've got to specify the types. Um, so I'm going to say, uh, Genome equal G and test results equal R. Is that the syntax? No, that is not the syntax. It's inside the braces. Oh, yeah, sure. That would make sense. Right. Because that we're saying things inside the braces about the. And it's type genome equals G type test results equals R. That's, that makes more sense. Okay. So that's kind of the minimal thing that allows us to say that an EC individual is an individual. And now this all compiles. Woo, that was exciting. Um, and population and bit string don't compile. Let's see what's going on there. Um, so where we call generate. Uh, oh, I think we just need to import something. Because we don't know about the generate trait. Ho ho! That made all that happy. And now maybe we'll get lucky and it'll be the same problem here. Where are we? Okay, here we go. Um, yep, I think, uh, no, yep, yeah, yeah it's, I think it is the same problem. Create individual generate. Uh, And now everything compiles. Heavens to Betsy. Now, 
cargo test. Just be paranoid. Cargo run. Oops. Ah. Cargo run. Hey, that did a thing. Um, yeah, so commit, 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 commit. So what have we done? We turned generation into a trait. That's the main thing we accomplished here. I guess we introduced the individual trait, but really it's the generates the main thing that sort of mattered. Um, well, we did need the individual trait. Did I see that twice? No, no. Okay, so stage all changes. Um, uh, turn, turn, turn individual cre generation into a trait. This adds a new generate trait that um, defines how new individuals are, new random individuals are created. Uh, boom. That was exciting. Thank you. Now, we can go back to the vec pop stuff. I'm going to close that. Let me close that for now. I'm sure we'll have to come back to them. But, um, oh, that was in, actually, I wanted population, didn't I? Um, so we've now changed. So now we could change this to vec pop i and hope and and do something with generation here um it, are we going to want to eat so we can either have the generate the generator be a um, generic type or we could have it be an associated type inside this um, and I feel like let's see what is what is our our generate just needs to be built on top of individuals so, and we have an individual, so we could, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and we wouldn't put that in the struct. We would put that here in the VecPop, I, uh-huh. So we would have, this would be I generate plus individual? No, because I guess generate is individual, so we don't need to specify them both. We just can specify the more constrained one. Um, like that. And then this becomes I colon colon genome. And I colon colon test results and this becomes I colon colon genome and now this Vec pop I so instead of getting a vector of I we get a vector of things because 
we need to actually call if I can generate we need to tell this to make eyes instead of calling EC individual generate we want to call uh, I generate and it just gets the random number generator. No. Um, come on, show me the error. I cannot be sense. Oh. Um, so we need to say that I needs to be send and yeah, I needs to be send. Um, oh, yes, you're right. The arguments are the same, aren't they? Because generate takes the three things. Okay, so I need to undo that. And it's just I generate. Are we still going to have a problem with send though? Yeah. So this is going to have to say plus send. So whereas before we had to say G and R were sendable, now we have to say the whole um, individual is sendable because we don't know how it's constructed. Um, and uh, a simple individual is sendable as long as its pieces are sendable. So that shouldn't be a problem. Okay. So that compiles. And, oops, I didn't want to do that. Test. And runs. So that was a nice incremental change. We changed one thing, and this is getting used. So we didn't change a lot, and that is actually getting used and seems to work. And so that's nifty. Um, uh, now this new method is actually a population generate. Yes. And so it might even make sense to change its name to be generate, to be honest with you. Um, and then, yeah, a from iterator probably makes sense. Um, and I wonder if I even want to change this name here while I'm working with this function. I kind of feel like maybe I do. Is that going to give me problems somewhere? I don't think so. I think that I ought to just be able to. Change that name. And everybody's still happy. OK. Um, so I think I'm going to commit that. Wah, wah, wah. So that was just changing the name. And this was the actual implementation. Uh, so I think that's the important piece. Um, so uh, convert VecPop new to VecPop I generate. So this starts the conversion, the incremental conversion of VecPop to VecPop I um, uh, converting 
the new method over to the new type. We also renamed it from new to generate at the same time. Um, and yeah, cool. And that now only depends on the one generic instead of the pair of generics that we had before. And so we'll continue on and these should be easy. Uh, I think these will be like, like totally straightforward um, because you may not even need to do anything. I'm not on those two. And this is just going to be an iter over i. So that part was super simple. Um, and we were going to get rid of best individual. I feel like I want to do that. Uh, ooh, arr, arr. Probably need I to be ORed if I keep this. Um, I'm going to actually try to keep it for a second. If it, if it annoys me, I'll just get rid of it. But getting rid of it changes a bunch of places, and I'd rather not like have to rush off and change a bunch of places. Um, uh, oh, and it's interesting. This, this at correctly never says that I has to have anything to do with individuals. And now here, I think we're going to need that I has to be ORed. But we don't say that I has to be anything to do with the uh, individual trait, which makes sense. Um, and then it's going to return a reference to an I. Yes. Cool. And then... We've got our from iterators. Wow, we're like nearly done. Right, just to be paranoid, uh, run everything. Cool. Run tests. Cool. All green, happy. So that's nifty. Um, I'm actually going to commit here before I get into the iterators, just in case the iterators turn out to be swampy. Um, but these were easy. That was nice. Um, convert utility utility methods vecpop utility methods to vecpop i this converts several, I'll say, all but the from iterator methods over to vecpopi. Boop, boop, boop. And now we got to do these guys. So we impl over i. This is just going to need to be i, fingers crossed. And this is just going to need to be i. And items will be i. Individuals be effect. Hey, look at that. That wasn't too bad. And then parallel should be the same, but with send. I bet we're going to need the send. Hey, I'll, I'll take it out just to make sure that it tells me, but I'm pretty sure we're going to need send because the individuals have to be sent around. Uh, I, I, and then the 
this is complaining because yep I need to be send just like I thought boom and uh, oh I think that was oh this should be I and I think I get too many eyes. I think that, yeah, it's gonna want, it's weird that this was somehow I instead of T. And when the T goes here, and I think that takes care of it. Let's run the test in here. All green, life is happy. Um, oh no, did something fail? Uh, something doesn't compile. Well, that's in lib. Really? What is lib's problem? I think. Um, line 122. There isn't anything there. What are you doing? I think you're confused. If I just run the test out here, what happens? Everything passes. I think VS Code got befuddled. Yeah, maybe. Oh! This over here might have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very possibly true. And if we come back here and just redo this. No. Yeah. No, it says it's all green. So this must be an old thing. Okay. So I'm going to actually delete that so that doesn't get in my way anymore. So that actually converts... Um, Oh, I made it go away. So, um, so it would have, if I go into one of these and press a key. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so we could commit now, although I think at this point, this is now. Oh, no, this is being referred to lots of places. But we could go through and start to remove those references because none of them matter anymore. Um, so any place that referred to a VecPop, we should be able to replace, GR sh should be replaceable with this. In fact, we ought to be able to do that with just a big global search and replace. But we definitely commit before we do something exciting like that because that, if I get it wrong, is going to be a nightmare. Um, okay. So, um, uh, convert from iterator, uh, over from VecPop to VecPop I, um, converts the two, uh, traits to create backpop eyes from iterators possibly parallel okay oh that's a good point um Although, can't I just search for any instance of this and replace it with this? Because I don't think there's going to be any place where... Um, well, I guess there could be, but I don't feel like there are going to be many places where I refer to VecPop without the extra goodies on it. Um...
Alternatively, like I could put, I could just temporarily move the eye into the middle or something to make sure that the pattern matching didn't get in the way. Um, hmm, that'd be a possibility. See how many things blow up. It's going to be a lot, though. I think there's going to be, uh, well, actually, it's like just the U's? Really? That's weird. And why was it even there? Um, and generation. Oh, I think these are masking the other errors because there are clearly uses of VecPop, but all we're ever seeing is the, the use error. Um, so commenting it out doesn't really win. Um, I say be bold, be daring, because we have, we can fall back on the mighty undo um, and see if we can replace instances of that with instances of this. So, uh, definitely want to change that and that and not that one. That would be bad. Um, and do be do be do do be do be do do be do 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 be do be do. Okay. Now what? What has happened, if anything? Um, okay, everything's saved, and oh, there are some errors. Uh, selectors and generation both broke something. Uh, oh. Yeah, no, that's right. So, selector. So, select takes a vec pop i and it didn't import it. Oh, come on. Import that. And did that fix the problem? Oh, maybe that's all that happened is that I needed to change the, and actually I probably just need to do that. And selectors, I probably need to do the same thing. Uh, probably could have just said I there, get rid of that. Uh, but there is still something broken in selectors. What is the problem? Oh, this still refers to, oh, because it didn't have, it had a generic G, but it had a specific test results. And we're not happy. Oh, because that's an individual. Um, And it's an EC individual, actually. And now I think everything compiles. Process. Destroyed. Hot diggity. Now we should be able to um where are you you're here this i think will comment out safely right because there oh no not there are obviously still other references so now maybe we do what you said and comment out um the if i change this Now what's the problem down here? Ah, yeah. So this is another place where we didn't have just G and R. 
So basically, any place we have something more specific than just G and R, we're going to have to um, do something with it. Um, I don't think we have a new bit string population in fact pop I I think that's gonna blow up to fix that oh or not okay I actually want to look at that in a second make sure I understand why that didn't blow up because I really thought that was gonna and then why are we grumpy down here? Uh, Beck pop I and it doesn't know the type. Huh. Interesting. It's I I it can't. Uh, not surprising, but it can't infer the type of the individual here. Um, so I could say back pop I into EC individual. Um, oh, go away. Uh, you 32 and U32, I think. Yes. Okay. This may be necessary elsewhere. Copy. Oh! Because it can infer those from what's happening. Ah, smart. Thank you. That was a good idea. And then this is going to be back pop I, and we might need to specify or not because we've, it knows what the, that these are EC individuals. So it knows what their types of their internal components are. So it doesn't need to have anything exciting happen there. And then main is grumpy because we still have a reference to I. And then here dot sum so it doesn't know that we can add these up so let's see why would that be so it knows the test results our i64s. The genome is a VEC of bools and count ones returns a vector of i64s. Would have thought that it could have figured the types out there. And I don't know why what I've changed would matter. Yeah, but why why do I need that? It's a question. When I didn't need it before, why do I need it now? Um Oh, total result is of type R. Is R not clear? So, test results I64. And that's just going to be an R. So, we've lost the specificity somewhere so 
r's results is a vector of type r is kind of all that we know at this point hmm so it's never been able to infer that end but here it knows that it's test results of i64 that's weird i don't really understand why it loses that knowledge as it goes forward well i'm not gonna worry about it right now i assume it, the traits must cause it to lose that information somehow and then that and then it, we have the same problem here it, it would seem And back pop I, and we're gonna have the same problem with some I sixty four. Boom. Now everybody compiles. And hey, cat, how you doing? Um, run the tests and run the code. So, and it was population, I think. Although I guess it's here as well. Um, new bit string population. Um, So vec pop i new bit string population. Vec pop i. What? Oh, we must implement that over in bit string. Oh, right there. We define that function here. And we just call self generate. And that does the right thing. So that's how that worked. Okay. I was like, I'm not sure I understand how magically that happened. I still don't get the I-64 thing on some, but um, I will not chase that right now. So this, oh, and actually I guess we want to remove the commented out, um, that's over here. Remove this commented out thing. Um, oh, uh, yes, there is a bench error. Thank you, good catch. I and that then needs to be an I come on here we go and this is going to need to be an I and I think that's everybody yes and I'm actually gonna I won't do it here um, but I'm actually gonna especially now that we've got our branching figured out I'll try running the benchmarks um before adding this stuff um the traits and after because be curious to see what um uh the uh uh what impact if any this had on typing and yeah i agree with you not only should we remove this but this needs to now be renamed um Rename back to just VEPOP. And these aren't being used anymore, which is kind of cool. So actually, yeah, there's no connection to the individual trait in the population file anymore because it's just an I, and as long as it knows how to generate itself, population doesn't need to know anything else about it. That's actually very slick. That makes me very happy. Oh, go away. Um, so if we make you disappear, and there's one other, uh, where did individual go? There they are. In 
you see this one. We don't use test result anymore here. That's also interesting. Yeah. So that can go away. Cool. Oops. I broke something in population. What did I do? Huh. Oh, those are used in the tests. They weren't used in the code up above. Um, and so they were being available in the test module because they were imported in this parent module. When I took them out of the parent module, it got grumpy. Um, so now, wow. So let's see. That was the weird thing I don't understand. Um, and then this is just converting VecPop to take a single thing. Um, there's lots of that. Um, and that's just cleaning up. And that's more of switching VecPop over. And that's all. I'll switching back pop over. Okay. Wee so um uh this completes the conversion of VecPop to VecPop I, or no, I, passing through the temporary VecPop I trace. Um, and this one, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, this simplifies things by having the population only depend on the individual or on the single generic I, which we will replace with an associated type implementing individual. Implementing the individual. Trait. Eventually replace. Boom. Okay. So what time is it? We got half an hour. Okay. So, uh, come back to, I'm going to close a whole bunch of windows. I'm just going to close everybody for now. Uh, we'll reopen what we need. So let's start with individual. So we want, we've got, got this individual trait and we want to, in population, have move the genome and the test methods to the trait. Whoops, ah. Whoops, I wanted this. So 
we basically want these guys here to become part of the trait. Um, now, yeah, that makes sense. And we would do that over here. So we'd specify them in the trait and we would implement them here this way. So we're going to leave that there. But we'll specify them both here. Let's just grab that. Uh, boom. So this trait we're going to need to have. Uh, and it's going to return type self genome. And that's going to be semicolon and self test test results and that's going to be semicolon so we're going to say we need to have oh yeah, 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 yeah. boom so given those then to implement that trait this doesn't implement the trait anymore because we're missing those pieces. So, impl uh, gr. Oh, I see, no, that was just, that could just be in here. Um, and this is probably even going to help me out if I let it. Quick fix, implement this in numbers yes do that um, so we want to return genome and we want to return test results oh yeah and it's self dot genome and self dot test results and we're grumpy because why are we grumpy Expected to borrow here, yeah, right. So we don't want to give those away. Voila. So now an EC individual has these two methods, which means we can, in fact, any individual has those two methods. Oh, and actually, since we had those, well, these were private. Oh, I'm, I'm on drugs. So any individual has those. That's good. Um, and then we'll get rid of this. I see. Yeah. So if we get rid of this, then anybody who doesn't know about the trait will tell us and we can import that. That makes a lot of sense. Probably should have commented that out, but whatever. Let's work our way up. And I presume that this is just a matter of, yep, use crate individual individual. Boom. Oh, and actually I took individual out. Um, and now we have, we're going to have to put it back, but that's okay. Um, it was interesting that it could be removed um, at that point. And bit string, same thing, I suspect. Yep. So we just need to import the crate everywhere that needs it and lib um, down here. Import the crate. Okay. Um, that's useful. And so if we come back to mod. Oh, thank you. Oh, man. It's like I get 
half the way there and then I get excited and run off to something else. Yep, that's what I want. And that works. And the benches will have the same problem. Yep. Import that module. And one more time with feeling. Import that. Oops, nope. Come on. Import that module. And I guess we could be paranoid and check that everything runs. And possess pass. Okay. Um, and actually, let's commit that. Because we touched almost every file in the whole world. Um, although really very little actually happened. Um, Where's that's the yeah um so move genome and test results into a uh, new individual trait uh, this moves these two methods out of, well, I guess this doesn't move them out of, um, but moves them into, I'm not really saying anything that the commit message didn't say. Blip. Quit. So that was cool. Um, now... So we know that an individual has to have those two things. So then the question is, what else does an individual have to have? Um, so we construct an EC individual. Um, we've got generate for an EC individual. Now, should we... We wouldn't, I don't think, but correct me if I'm wrong, we could, but I don't think we want to add generate as a, oh, actually we have. We said generate has to um, deal with, or uh, a generator has to be an individual because we need that to be able to get at the genome and the test results. So those two things are connected. Um, and then ORD and partial ORD. And those might not be true for, well, no, because our individual trait does um, tie us to having test results and ORD and uh, partial ORD. Oh, I'm in the wrong place. ORD and partial ORD are both uh, just features of the test results. So we basically just need the test results to have those properties. And so maybe it makes sense to say that individual implements ORD and partial ORD? And then just pass the buck on to test results? Can I do that? Can I say impl... So you think I'd leave it be and not bring the ORD and the, um, let's bring it over here. Um, can I close to the right? Oh, I can. That's kind of nice. Um, you wouldn't tie these two traits to the 
super trait. Um, we can leave that be. I have a feeling it's going to be something that we'll want to do at some point. Um, so I'd be implementing it for T of type individual. And so what I was, what I was thinking is, can I say, pu oh, no. uh, impl board for individual. So I'd have to implement the associated types. Oh. So I can't have those be generic at this point. What if I do that? Yeah. Whoa, that was a bad idea. That just brought everybody in. And adding the dying keyword is not really doing anything. I think that's just a red herring. The the types are really what it's unhappy about. Um, and so we would be tied to a particular type here and that's not something we want to have happen. Um, oh, I see what you're saying. Board for T, where T, well, actually, we could probably just do it here. And, oh, no, doesn't like that. Maybe I do need the. Actually, can I? No, I can't do that. I don't think I can do where T Oh, and you'd have to say impl T Oh, well, so this would be T colon individual here. All right, and then we wouldn't have those two things. And we're still unhappy. Oh. Yeah. So we have a generic type. Yeah. Uh, and there, that's, that generic is not being used as an argument to any other type. Um, so it does have to be on the individual types. So, yep, I'm, I'm convinced that we're stuck with this. Which is a little weird. Um, but maybe that's just how it is. Okay. Um, no, I haven't. I don't think anything's stuck, right? Oh, well. Something's changed. What's changed? Nothing meaningful. Discard. Um, so then I think the question is, so an individual goes in a population and a population is currently a struct, but we want to make a population into a, um, Well, uh, so I guess this is, are we done tradifying individual 
And is this all we need? Is that it can genome and give us the genome and test results and that there is this notion of generation that can make new ones? Um, yeah, or are there other EC individuals? Are there places that we could replace where we're currently calling or referring to EC individual in other files that could be removed and replaced with references to um, uh, th our trait? Uh, let's see. Let's try population. What's going on? Um, that's all in tests. And the tests are going to need to have concrete types. Although it would be potentially interesting. So actually, maybe that's worth looking at. Um, rah, rah, rah. So in the tests, right now, everything's in concrete types. But we also ought to be able to um, like explicitly declare things to be of type Vecpop of individual, right? Um, so can I do that here? No, and that's not going to work actually because Vecpop is, oops, no, uh, population up here. Vecpop has type I. So I'd have to say something like impl individual. I don't want to be here again. Um, no, that doesn't work. Not in variable binding. So I have to actually provide, I can't put a trait there. Um, and I can't do something like that. And I need a concrete type here, it won't work. Uh, associated type bindings are not allowed here. B, B, B. Um, so really that just is going to have to stay as a concrete type. I can't say that it's uh, uh, something more generic than that. Um, and the generation clearly makes like things. In fact, actually, can we... Can we just remove this? Do we have to say what um, our type is? Oh, we don't have to until we get down to here. Um, and then here, the type has to be known. So we would have to specify a type for that individual. Huh. It's interesting. It like completely doesn't know anything as opposed to knowing that this returns. Well, yeah, I mean, it should know it returns individuals, but it doesn't know anything else. Um, so I can either type up here or I can type down here. So I could say EC individual um, uh, 
And, whoa, didn't like that. Oh, it's a reference. Yeah. So I could type it down there. And then that type just pulls up and becomes part of the inferred type up here, which probably makes more sense to be specific about the inferred type up above, to be honest with you. Say it once up here when we use it. Uh, vec pop EC individual. We maybe don't need to specify those pieces. Yes. Cool. So that isn't, um, let's see. Oh. Oh, I see. EC individual. And then we don't have to say anything here. Because we're saying it there. We can't spell. EC indiv individual. Uh, oh, and then that's going to have to have two things, which I bet we can elide. Yes. Nice. Okay. And so now this infers the right type. Well, didn't have to infer much because we told it most everything right here. And then everything plays out okay farther along. So all of those EC individuals, I think those are going to have to be there. I don't think we have to make any of those go away. So let's go back to references. Um, so population is clean. Let's look at selectors. I have a feeling selectors is going to be like full of excitement. Um, and an opportunity to possibly... Oh, I wanted selectors to stay open. Well, I didn't get there. Um, EC individual. No, not there. Not over there. Not over there. Over here. EC individual. Yeah. So a selector returns, takes a population of these and returns an EC individual. And that's overly specific. We really would like it to be takes a vector of individuals without really caring much or as little as possible about the details and returns an individual. Because things like random, we shouldn't have to make any assumptions at all about the kind of individual in question. Um, and so... So that means that selector, the goal would be to have selector take a single I here instead of G and R. Um, change the selector, but leave the generator using selector EC individual. So the generator is here and it doesn't actually refer to a selector i think you mean generation okay yeah so generation uh th this would become selector of something concrete here instead of something generic. And then since this is concrete, they'd line up. And then at some point, maybe we can make them um, go away. Well, it's four o'clock, and that probably seems like a good place to stop. Um, so I think I'll make a note that where we want to pick up next time is probably with selector um, and looking to remove so next time 
start with selectors.rs and work on replacing ec individual with individual as appropriate and possible. Um, let's have a look. Anything specific in BitStream? Um, so there's four references. So there's that one up at the top, and then there's these three down here. Only in the tests. Uh, is that true? No, because this is not in the test. Oh, so this makes a new bit string um, uh, EC individual. Yeah, that's kind of a awkward name. But so this is basically doing is a wrapper around generate. Um, and maybe. Yeah, that might be changeable display that's going to want to be specific to ec individual and a uh, new bit string population for a vec pop so that's going to want to be um so i think these are actually probably appropriate to have as ec individuals since they're doing specific ec individually kind of things um, they're tied to bit strings. Um, so it looks like that's actually pretty clean. So I have a feeling selectors is the place to go. And then see what that does to generation. And then that'll probably bleed all over lib. Lib's a bit of a mess. It turned into sort of a dumping ground for the last few bits. Um, and like child maker is in here, which doesn't really make any sense. And there should be probably a child maker module. And yeah, so I think there's some kind of a mess here. Um, and I, I think there probably ought to be um, a bit string module that has all like the bit string population in it and the bit string um, individual in it and all that stuff um, in a particular, um, maybe even a, just a GA module. Well, yeah, actually, BitString might be better. And then move the particulars from various places into there. Um, so, okay. I think that's very cool. I'm very happy. I think that's been a productive day. I will be back on Tuesday morning from 10 to noon, my time to do more fun and excitement with this. Um, and then we'll uh, return Wednesday to do more Wednesday evening. Um, so yeah, so Tuesday, um, uh, eight, no, 10 till noon, Wednesday, seven to 9 p.m. And then next Saturday, um, 10 to noon and two to four. Um, and I think barring some kind of revelation about the ice repos, which I don't think I'll even think about. Um, I think I'm going to stick on this. I think there's a lot of work to be done here. Um, and I'm learning things and enjoying the work. So I'm going to stay focused on this and I hope that works for people. So thank you all very much. Uh, especially as it's too. Thank you as always for all of your feedback and suggestions. Um, and I will see everybody again on Tuesday. Goodbye.